Hello and welcome to uh, this recap and preview of weeks two and three of the Monroe Cheesemakers Intermural Basketball League. I'm Ethan Rosenstiel and thanks for tuning in. We got a fun episode of this um, of the recap and preview. Uh, but remember, Ripper Brands will be bringing you all the latest content around the MIBL, including player, coach, and referee interviews, in-game content and updates, hot takes, and a special segment on the Ripper Podcast. You can catch all the latest content on our Instagram and Facebook pages or right here on the Ripper Brands YouTube channel, including this Well Loves Referee Montage, which we aren't going to show, but here's a link. Make sure you check that out if you haven't. It's funny. It's uh, of our very own Ryan Matheson. He put on a, he put on a show in the game he refed on, on Wednesday, so make sure you check that out. That's available on our Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube as well. Let's recap week two. Man. That gray versus white game, that might have been game of the year. So far it is for sure. We'll see what shakes up the rest of the season. But a 30-26 to 26 final as white team continues their undefeated streak. But that, that game went right down to the wire. Gray team, Eli Schaefer had a day with 17 points. But that white team just overall put on a show as they get the W to remain 3-0. Uh, we have a new front runner for the MVP, along with many other awards. So later in the show, we'll make sure we highlight those for you. Red team's struggles continue as they remain uh, without a win as they are 0-3. Let's see if they can get in the win column during week three. But each week, the continue uh, the the turnouts continue to grow. And so thank you. Um, I know Coach Bassett loves to see people coming out and, and watching. And it seems like each week there's more people who want to play in the league. So it's great. Uh, let's keep that up and continue to grow the atmosphere. Let's take a look at the season standings through week two. As we as we highlighted, White got the big one over Gray, 30-26. to 26. They move up one as they are 3-0 with that plus 16 point differential. And Blue moves down one. Or I'm sorry, Blue moves up one as well as they are 3-1. and one. They got their head coach Taylor Herbst back. Makes a big difference. They're plus eight in the point differential cap column. Uh, but then that gray team, they were the number one. They got beat by white. They fall to one and two. They actually lost both their games on Wednesday. Uh, they're still positive in the point differential, but they're down to three. And now uh, black and red remain at the four and five spots as black is one and two. And red is 0 and three. Black kind of got back on track. They lost the blue as well on Wednesday, but Black kind of got back on track with getting their first win, so uh, watch out for them coming forward. They might be a sleeper team that might be able to put them together. They got a lot of, they got a star-studded lineup for sure. Let's see with Red if they even get in the win column. Let's check out the awards race. We highlighted that there was going to be some new uh, front runners in some of our awards, but let's start the MVP, and there's one of our new front runners. Caden Bloom comes in unranked from last week, he is uh, leading the league in points per game at 12, and he's leading his team, white team, 3-0 and uh, currently so far through the first two weeks. And so you got to give it to him. Uh, our former front runner for MVP, Parker Isley, moves down a spot. He's still up there with his teammate, Caden. He's averaging eight a game, second best in the league. Uh, so kudos to the white team for having the top two players in the MVP race coming from their team. Uh, Ethan Hayden comes in unranked with the blue team. Blue team ranks second in the in the standings. He's averaging seven and a half. And Gavin Falker, new to the list, averaging seven point three points per game from the black team. And Eli Schaefer had a slow start, but that seventeen point performance when the when they when a game you know big game against the white that was a great performance with the seventeen points. So you got to give it to him. He's going to come in at the five spot for us. He also comes in on rank. So a new shakeup in the MVP race for sure. Uh, but Caden Bloom definitely front running the MVP race as he is in the offensive player of the year race as well. Uh, the points per game he leads the league in that with twelve. Parker Asley led the offensive player of the year standings uh, a week ago, and he moves down one spot, similar to the MVP race. Sawyer Vaguely. The freshman coming in for the red team, he's averaging 7.7 points per game. Uh, obviously not good enough for the MVP with this team being 0-3. Ethan Hayden from the blue team at 7.5, and, and Gavin Fulker at the 7.3. So there's your Offensive Player of the Year uh, standing so far. Here's your Comeback Player of the Year. All these are former basketball players at one point or another. 
Caden Bloom was actually on this list earlier. He's going to move up a spot. He's averaging the 12 points a game for his white team. Parker Isley moves down a spot, similar to what we've seen through the first two awards. Ethan Hayden comes in at third. Gavin Falker and then Ben Gadula comes in. As you saw that pretty cool clip of him throwing the shades and then hitting the three that we were able to catch on camera. He's averaging 6.3 points a game. He comes in unranked. So black and white, both of their teams are got a good representation here in the Comeback Player of the Year. Here's the Coach of the Year. I mean, you got to give it to the sophomore crew led by Marcus Ott with um, LT and Makai and Peyton and Jashan, all those guys leading the way to their 3-0 record. They move up a spot. Taylor Herbst also moves up one as he returns to the bench. It shows pivotal, and Bassett highlighted this in his write-up this week. Um, First week, he was out with illness, and his team didn't perform. Uh, and then Taylor comes back to the back to the bench, and his team goes two and zero last week. And that's how that's what coaching shows. And so he's going to be at the number two spot if they can get a big win over White uh, at some point when when they play them. That could be huge, and that would definitely skyrocket his skyrocket his coaching status. And then Bryce Rally, who was the front runner for Team Gray, he falls down to the third spot as this team is one and two. They're looking to bounce back in week three. The week three picks, here is what we got. White versus blue. This is the game, probably the game of the week now. This could be actually game of the year. We'll see how that goes. But let's start at the top. Black versus white. The black the black team, you know, we we uh, we highlighted that they got a star-studded lineup, a lot of former players. They haven't really been able to put it together yet. Uh, they showed some signs of improvement. They were a part of a high-scoring game with the blue team um, last week. But I still think, I mean, that white team is just unstoppable right now. And you got to give me them. Uh, to pull away with this early week three matchup. Then red versus gray. I think this one's pretty easy. Give me the gray team. Red, they haven't shown me any reason to vote for them to win the game. And so give me them. Black versus red. I think the black team is going to pull out with this one as well. Give me them over the red. And then this might, this is going to challenge game of the game of the year um, honors to the white versus gray game. But I, I kind of picked the favorites in the other games. I think blue I think Blue's going to make a major shakeup. I think Taylor Herbst has that squad ready to go. I think they they believe in what Taylor's telling them. I think the Blue team's going to come in and make a big upset over the White because right now the White team has all the momentum. The entire school of the Mineral High School, every student thinks that White team is going to beat them, and they're going to win the, uh, the the entire league this this season. But I think the Blue team comes in and stuns them and shakes up what is going to look like. It's going to be a crazy playoff picture. Um Personally, two and two and two through uh, last week in my picks, not horrible, but not great. So we're looking to make a shakeup. I think this is a a four and zero possibility here for sure. Um, obviously, I think these three games are pretty easy, but this one's a tough one. So I'm gonna go. I think with the underdog in that game. So with that being said, that's gonna wrap up this edition of the recap and preview of the MIBL. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you stop out to the Mineral High School and check out Week 3 action starting at 8 p.m. on Wednesday this week. I'll be there providing all the in-game content and updates similar to what I did last week that you can find on our story, and we'll be able to get some cool pictures and hopefully um, enhance our what we, what we put out to everybody who's not able to make it there, and hopefully we're able to give everybody a good laugh. Until then. I'm Ethan Rosenstiel signing off. Everybody have a great week. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And, of course, go Cheesemakers.